Yeah, I will tell you uh, a bit more about uh, like the most important LARP we did in uh, our organization, Education Center Post in Minsk, uh, which was called 1943. Uh, this LARP was created in the frames of a bigger project uh, together that was implemented together with the um, Norwegian organization uh, Rafta House and Eric Arabrot was all, our good uh, like partner and colleague at that time. And um, this project included not only the LARP, but it was also a project uh, about education. And uh, uh, we also did a big documentary based on the material we collected during this um, uh, project, but I will tell you a bit more about this. But um, my first, like, yeah, first important slide is uh, usually when you start LARP, you never know uh, what is your starting point, what will uh, lead you to uh, create a LARP. Uh, sometimes it's uh, just a brilliant idea, uh, sometimes it's just an interesting thing, like a prop, like a beautiful hat, and you build up uh, a LARP upon it. In our case, it was um, uh, it wasn't so easy. Uh, we uh, did um, like a tour, like an expedition, folklore expedition, where we collected uh, uh, traditional songs. And during these expeditions, when we interviewed um, older people, uh, they suddenly started to uh, like to talk to us and to tell uh, tell us uh, their stories from the Second World War. Uh, the stories they, ne they never told to anyone because these stories were not included in the like in the uh, legal and uh, official framework of the uh, history of the Second World War in Belarus. Because if you if you will go to Belarus or some of us already live there, uh, <laughs> you know that the whole state propaganda, the, the whole state ideology is based on the history of the Second World War. And when we started this project. Uh, and we told our friends and colleagues, oh, we'll do, the pro uh, we'll do a LARP on Second World War. They said, hi, it's Second World War again? Could you maybe do like, I know, 60s, 80s, something more interesting, but not this time again. But why, why did we do it? Uh, for us, uh, uh, it was very important uh, first to highlight the other aspect of this history. Uh, not the battle scenes, not the fighting, not the um, other very, uh, yeah, uh, like well-known uh, aspects of the war, but uh, we pointed out only one aspect. How did civilians live at that time in a small occupied village in Belarus? For sure, we, will, we were very inspired by the, uh, by the uh, famous uh, LARP uh, 1942 that was already mentioned um, two days ago. Uh, so we uh, named our LARP 1943, uh, but <laughs> I think it was <laughs> the only one connection to it. Uh, but um, so we tried to uh, uh, try to put uh, like this uh, everyday life of civilians uh, on the top of um, on the top of the LARP. Um, we also tried to escape the black and white uh, history because uh, when we also started to do this project, some of our colleagues and friends told me, "Aha, uh -huh, you, you you won't say that partisans uh, hiding in the woods were bad guys and all the German soldiers were good guys." We say, "No, we don't want to change anything in this." We just wanted to show you how it was, how did it mean for the normal people living in the, uh, in the house uh, during all these uh, yeah, events. Uh, the LARP lasted uh, three days, two nights. We played 24 hours. Uh, so even at night, German soldiers could uh, come into your house and uh, s trying to find a partisan hiding or a Jewish girl hiding in, the, in this house. So it was very, uh, very high pressure on the um, on the players. Uh, there were 50 participants, and we were playing somewhere in the Belarusian woods. Uh, sometimes uh, not all, not all the participants even knew where it is uh, because it was very far. Uh, we had different groups. Uh, we had uh, civilians, both Orthodox and Catholic. It was also very important for us to uh, see how how they would uh, cooperate between uh, between each other. 
We had uh, German soldiers for sure, we had uh, Polish uh, soldiers, Armia Krajowa, we had uh, red partisans, and we had also two geese and one god. Um, yeah, a bit uh, about the failures. Uh, the character uh, creation res uh, responsibility. It was uh, all the characters were written by organizers. Uh, but it was an intention because during these expeditions we gathered uh, a lot of personal stories uh, of the people and we put it, put them into uh, the LARP. So actually, many players they played real personalities and. Uh, sometimes, uh, like during the uh, during uh, during the debrief, some of the participants said, "Okay, I was playing um, an old uh, uh, man having three sons. One son uh, was uh, serving German soldiers. One son, uh, one son was uh, hiding in the woods together with partisans, and one son was uh, like joined the Polish uh, army." And she said, "But it sounds a bit unrealistic because it's uh, too." like three sons, three enemies, and uh, all this stuff. But then we said, yeah, but th this was the real personality. And we, uh, yeah, we knew this one of the sons we um, interviewed uh, in advance. Um, player motivation. Uh, it was a relatively high degree of uh, competition between players and groups of players, but we try to avoid any uh, battle scenes, any combating because, uh, and shooting, because it wasn't our uh, idea. Yeah, even geese, uh, it's to survive. Okay, uh, pression players, relatively hardcore LARP. Uh, little sleep, little food, uh, partisans were living in the forest, uh, it was sometimes very cold. Yeah, for, for players it also was Okay, environment. We had um, we tried to make 360 degree illusion. Actually, it wasn't so hard because uh, if you go like uh, in a small village in the in the Belarusian forest, you will find a lot of stuff still from the Second World War. So we just find a lot of plates, a lot of uh, costumes, and uh, all the props. Uh, quite easy. It wasn't it, it wasn't so hard. Yeah, and we also had uh, reenactors. Uh, they played German soldiers. Uh, reenactors always has uh, always have a lot of uh, stuff. They <laughs> really happy to show. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, mm? it, it. So they have uh, um, costumes, uh, guns, and yeah. Uh, loyalty to world. We uh, tried to make compromises. We didn't want to make it uh, uh, very. Um, um, we yeah. We tried to make it more playable than plausible. So we tried to also sometimes make some compromises with the history. Uh, we had like uh, some famous uh, personalities uh, in the uh, from the history in our LARP, although it wasn't very realistic. Like we had. Uh, Peter Masharov, uh, some of the Belarusian participants know them, uh, know him. Yeah, and um, we tried to make it very uh, interesting to play uh, for our participants uh, because after the uh, after the LARP, we organized a very interesting uh, debrief that lasted like uh, the first debrief lasted two, uh, uh, no, even three or four hours, and then we also meet uh, with uh, with some groups and also um, yeah discussed uh, the results of the LARP. That was all.